right so in the last lecture we had started uh, with applications of differentiation to understand the behavior of functions so let's continue from that point onwards today Okay, so what we had seen last time was the increasing and decreasing nature of function uh, functions at various intervals on the basis of the derivative of the function so we had seen how to understand the behavior of a function in a certain interval from value of its derivative so what we saw is that if the derivative of the function is positive in an interval let's say a to b that means the function fx is increasing for that particular interval and if the derivative is negative in an interval let's say c to d then the function is decreasing for that particular interval so let's understand this with a couple of examples today now i have this function y is equal to 1 by x plus x okay and for this i am defining x only as greater than 0 so so find the intervals or values of x just a moment i'll be share the file so find the intervals or values of x within this given condition that x is greater than 0 for which y increases with respect to x and y decreases with respect to x okay. so we'll start with this and then we'll do a bit more analysis on this function this is a very interesting function and we'll discuss more about it so just try this out people first
Okay, so let's understand this. So y is one by x plus x. So if we differentiate this, so as you know, differentiation of one by x is minus one by x square. The differentiation of x is one. one. So this is the derivative. So now we can see that therefore, dy by dx is greater than zero for the condition that 1 minus 1 by x square is greater than 0 or the condition that 1 is greater than 1 by x square or that means that x square should be greater than 1. Okay. Now x square is greater than 1 would mean this. So again going by the wavy curve method that we discussed last time you can see here that on the number line, the factor x minus 1 as a critical point at 1, it is negative for x less than 1, positive for x greater than 1. Whereas the factor x plus 1 as a critical point at minus 1, it is negative for x less than minus 1, positive for x greater than 1. So the product of these two This will be such that it will be positive in this region, it will be negative in this region and again positive in this region. However, we have to take a restricted set of values of x. We are restricted by this. So anyway, we have to take only the positive values of x. So for us, only this part will be, okay. this part we will not consider. Okay. So this will give us the condition that x should be greater than 1 or x should belong to the interval from 1 to infinity for dy by dx to be positive. And similarly, and dy by dx is negative for the condition that 1 minus 1 by x square is less than 0. So that will again give you the condition that x square is less than 1. So when we solve this, we will get the interval minus 1 to 1. But here we will take the interval only from 0 to 1 because we have the condition that x is not taking non-positive values. So this analysis, what it's telling us that for x being greater than zero in the interval x being zero to one, y is decreasing because 
dy by dx is negative and in the interval x going from 1 to infinity y is increasing because dy by dx is positive कंडीशन इन द्वेश्चन If if this was not given, then we would have included those values also, right? Okay, now through this analysis, we'll do one more thing. So hope this analysis up to this point is clear. So now we'll also do this that. So we have earlier as part of this question we have seen all this. Okay, now we will add one part to this question. Sir, could you scroll up for a second? Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it is clear now. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll add one more part to this that. Analyze the values of y for x tending to zero. Because x can't take the value zero, why? Because the question has already specified that x should be greater than zero, and also we have a one by x term, so one by zero is not defined. But when it's tending to zero, we can still define it. Okay, and again for x tending to infinity. Okay, and finally, use the above information. to plot an approximate graph of y versus x obviously for x only being positive okay. so now this is like a little bit more complicated than you know just understanding the behavior of the function but we'll see how this actually helps us in analyzing the function a little bit further not just understanding Where dy by dx is positive and where dy by dx is negative, but also understanding the shape of the graph, how this is going to help us a little bit further. Okay, so what we have analyzed so far that using part one and two, if we combine the two and sort of analyze it on a number line, you can see that now our number line will consider only from x equal to zero onwards, and that too we will not be considering the point zero, okay, because it has to be only positive. So what we have seen is that. Between zero and one, the function is decreasing. Okay. The behavior of the function x plus one by x or whatever one by x plus x 
and after this it's increasing okay now what else we can see here that at x equal to 1 the value of y is how much it is 2 f of 1 you can see is 1 upon 1 plus 1 so that's 2 okay now let's come to the third thing what can we say about y when x is tending to 0 can anybody tell me what can we analyze about the value of y when x is tending to 0 Just see the function and try to analyze. It tends to infinity. Sorry, come again with a louder. Y tends to infinity. Yes, very good. Y tends to infinity. Okay, how come Y tends to infinity? Because this term 1 by X. Its value kaisa ho jayega when X is tending to 0? Infinity. infinity. Right, whereas the other term X is tending to 0. So it doesn't bother us. Okay. So what we'll see is when X is tending to 0, Y tends to infinity. Okay, now, if this is confusing us, we can just do a simple example. Like take some very small value of x. Like take x as 10 raised power minus 8, suppose. Okay, it's a pretty small value. It's basically 0 0.00000001, something like this, right? Okay, so it's a pretty small value. What about the value of y? It will become 1 upon 10 raised power minus 8 plus 10 raised power minus 8. So it will become 10 raised power 8 plus 10 raised power minus 8. So it will become now like this. Okay. Okay. So it's pretty large, you can see. So y is basically almost 10 raised power 8. So as x is becoming even smaller, y will become even larger. So we can say that is the justification for this. Okay. So that means on this number line, you can analyze that as x tends to 0, what is happening to y? It is tending to infinity. Okay. And then over here at x equal to 1, what is the value of y? It's equal to 2. And then again, it starts increasing. Now, secondly, what can you tell me about y when x tends to infinity? What can we say about y? It tends to 0. No, no look again, better. It's x plus 1 by x, no? But infinity. The, the value of y is what? x plus 1 by x, no? Sir, infinity. Again, it will tend to infinity. Very good. Okay. So y will again tend to infinity. Oh, yes, sir. Because there is also that term, no? x plus 1 by x. So this time, 1 by x term tends to 0, but then x tends to infinity. No? So again, you can check this out with an example. Now, this time, take x as a very large number, like 10 raised power 9, let's say. That is... Okay. Got that correct? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Now, what about y? y will be 1 by x plus x. So, it will become 10 raised power minus 9 plus 10 raised power 9. So, that's approximately 10 raised power 9 only. So, it's tending to infinity. So, as x tends to infinity, y also tends to infinity. Whereas here, as x tends to 0, y tends to become infinity. So, now this this is going up to it's going up to infinity as x tends to infinity y also tends to infinity so this gives us some idea about how the graph should look okay so this analysis it includes what we have done in part 1 2 okay and now we have added this information to this that you know it's starting from infinity as x tends to 0 decreasing 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 till it comes to this point x equal to 1 y equal to 2 and again it starts increasing and goes towards infinity so that means the graph is going to look something like this so put together all that information and we can say a little bit more about the graph. Okay. You can understand that the graph will look something like this. Going towards infinity. So this point will be 2. So this point has a coordinate of 1, 2. But again, in this graph, you can see that it satisfies the properties that we learned above. That the function is decreasing from 0 to 1, then again increasing from 1 to in, uh, infinity. And also the limits that as x tends to infinity, y also tends to infinity. As x tends to 0, y also tends to 0. So 
so all these things they are coming out in the shape of a graph okay so i'll just minimize this a bit to we'll go through this section okay so this part 3 and 4 uh, is like a little bit advanced like right now in basic calculus at the test level you will not be asked questions like this but uh, you should still have an idea a little bit about these things how differentiation values can be or derivatives values can be used beyond just the fact that whether the function is increasing or decreasing but also in understanding the overall shape of the graph or the behavior of the graph yes we are going to learn integration also very soon aditya just when we complete these applications of differentiation we will learn about integration also integration will be comparatively easier to learn to learn okay so let's try out another question of this type so next example we have this one y is equal to x to the power 4 okay. minus 2x square x belongs to the set of all real numbers minus infinity to infinity so first of all find the intervals or sets of values of x for which y is increasing with respect to x this is a short form i am using for increasing and y is decreasing with respect to x analyze y for x tending to plus or minus infinity plot an approximate graph so again you'll see that this third part that we are doing it's a bit advanced for basic calculus but still is some extra information that we are learning but first and second part is pretty easy you should know how to do this as a standard sort of application 
especially this part that the first part the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing you should know how to work this out uh, quite easily using the method we have discussed above so just try this out and send me your answers you can text me your answers on the chat board also Yes, Vedant, that is correct. Sir, is my answer correct? Uh, once you have to check your answers. Sir. Just check the wavy curve thing that you have Oh, no, once you your answer is correct. The second answer you sent me is okay. Okay, sir. Harsh, you have to check your answer, sir. Yes, Vedant, correct.
माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू माइनस वन यूनियन विथ वन टू इन्फिनिटी एंड वाई विल बी डिक्रीजिंग सॉरी नॉट दिस माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू माइनस वन दैट्स करेक्ट Whereas y is decreasing for that interval, minus infinity to minus one, then union with zero to one. So basically, you will get a very interesting thing that if you look on the number line, we will come to that. Okay, and you will see that y tends to infinity for x tending to infinity, y tends to infinity again for x tending to Minus infinity also. So when you analyze the graph, you actually get this kind of a graph. Sir, yeah. Sir, can you show like, for y when increasing? How you got one minus one comma zero? I'll show. Okay, so basically, you have to first differentiate, then factorize the derivative, okay, and use that number line method that I told you. Okay, so let's do it systematically. So our function is x to the power four minus two x squared. Okay, this is the same function for which I've drawn the graph here. so dy by dx is differentiation of this term so that's the cubic function it will become 4x cube minus 4x okay so this if we factorize we can write as this so now to understand when dy by dx is positive okay and when dy by dx is negative you have to actually understand this in the number line right So do the wavy curve or number line method analysis. Okay, so you have the product of three terms now. Four x, four x. Clearly, the critical thing is zero. If x is less than zero, four x is negative. If x is greater than zero, then four x is positive. Then you have the term x minus one. For that, the critical point is one. Now you understood now how we are getting the intervals. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, might have missed out one of the three factors. That's why. So now we come to dy by dx, which is the product of all these three. So in this region, you can see that dy by dx is product of three positive terms, so it's positive. in this region it's positive into positive into negative so it's negative okay. again this region it's positive this region it's negative okay. so now i can say about the function the function will be decreasing here then increasing here then again decreasing here then again so that's how i came to the answers okay, for this so this will tell me that
this is what's happening here. So this is the first part, the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. Now next what I've done is I've analyzed the function not only plus minus infinity, I've also analyzed at this point at x equal to minus one, I analyze that the value of y becomes minus one. At x equal to plus one also the value of y becomes minus one. And at x equal to zero, the value of y is zero. And x tending to minus infinity, the value of y tends to infinity. That's why it's decreasing like this, as you can see in the graph. Okay. And again, at x tending to infinity, y tends to infinity. So, yes. So, like, why did you do minus one, zero, one? Like, minus one and one will include, right? Because x minus one and x plus one, it is. You see the three factors, no? dy by dx is the product of three factors, no? 4x into x minus one into x plus one. So, each of those factors on the number line, when they have negative values, when they are positive, values for x you are understanding okay this is your number line of x so the factor of 4x is negative when x is less than 0 positive when x is greater than 0 but the factor x minus 1 is negative the moment x is becoming less than 1 is positive only when x is greater than 1 what it mean? okay sir So basically this condition that we are solving that dy by dx is greater than zero. We're solving this. This implies that 4x into x minus one into x plus one is should be greater than zero. And that gives us this interval. And similarly, this condition is when 4x into x minus one into x plus one is less than zero. So that gives us this interval. So of course in this interval, say that, that x belongs to this interval. Can you tell me how you got the second sub question? Sorry, come again, Vita. What was the doubt? Second sub second sub question. We had to analyze. Second part. Yes, sir. Infinity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's now. See, in this function, what's happening now? You have two terms, x to the power four and two x square. Which one will dominate for large values of x? X to the power four will dominate, yes. now. Yes, sir. And that's with positive sign. Yes, sir. So you can always like uh, do a check with some large value of x, like take x as 10 raised power 9 or 10 raised power 8 or something like that. And you will see that y will become a very huge number. 
it will come out the order of 10 raised by 32 or something, you know, whether it is plus or minus. So that's why at plus or minus infinity, y is tending to infinity. It happens because the x to the power 4 term dominates. Or large values of x. Sir. Yes. Sir, in that B sub part, uh, where you have written uh, union of 0 and 1, so can't we write uh, minus infinity to 1 as it is uh, less no, than No, 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 because beach between minus 1 and 0, what is happening? It has opposite behavior, you know, it's increasing. You oh. understand, no? Ha, to, sir, so it's repeat nahi kar uh, uh, repeat nahi kar sakte. Repeat nahi kar sakte. Upper in the graph, you can see that is decreasing up to here. Okay. Then in between, between minus one and zero, it's again increasing. Then again, it's decreasing. So where are the intervals where it's decreasing? This interval from here to here. Yes, and sir. then again, this. Okay. Whereas the other intervals, it's increasing. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, so now this graph is also making sense based on all this information, right? So could you just explain the graph like once? Yeah, so basically, see, the graph is coming from the information that I've shown on the number line. That when you start your graph from x minus infinity, where y is starting from, plus infinity, and it's decreasing up to the point x equal to minus 1, where the value of y is minus 1. So when you visualize your graph, you're starting from somewhere here. Okay, but it's decreasing till you reach the point where x is minus 1. So y is also minus 1. So it's coming from here to here, like this. Then it's increasing in between, but up to where? Up to the point where x is 0. And where x is 0, y is also 0. And then likewise, okay. you analyze. You know, so. Okay. Thank you, sir. So basically, you have to have all these values. These values have to be kept in mind. And in between these values, the behavior of the function. First decreasing, then increasing, then again decreasing, then again increasing. You realize it has to be like this W kind of shape. Can you explain uh, uh, extending to infinite minus infinity? You got y tending to mm. so just take some large negative value of x. No? Like take x as minus of thousand, and you'll understand what will happen. Y will tend to become 10 raised power 3 to the power 4. So it will become of the order 10 raised power 12. 10 raised to minus 3, right? If I want to take Nee, nee, but uh, x tending to negative infinity. So it should be a large negative number. No? Okay. So take x like minus of 10 raised to power 6, for example. So y will become what? Minus of 10 raised to power 6 to the power 4 minus 2 of minus 10 raised to power 6 to the power 2. So here this will be 10 raised to power 24 minus 2 into 10 raised to power minus uh, 2 raised to power 12. Okay. So which will dominate? 24 will dominate over 12. No? So it's still yeah. a very large number. So you can see here, x is tending to minus infinity. So y is tending to how much? Infinity. Because this term is dominating over this term. That's what I meant by saying that x to the power 4 term dominates. 
आपको बहुत प्लस माइनस इंटरमीडिएट इसमें बोल रहे Okay, so hope this is all clear, people. Yes. Now we move to another aspect of differentiation and another type of operation actually involving differentiation, and that is called derivative. So what do we mean by the term second derivative? Let's understand this. So second derivative is first of all, it is denoted by a symbol like this, d with a square written on top, and in the denominator x with the square. Okay. So this symbol looks very strange, and casually we read it as d2y by dx square. Okay. So the pronunciation of it is that it is d2y. Divided by dx square, okay. but what it actually means is that it is the second derivative of y with respect to x, and the second derivative is nothing but differentiation of the first derivative or of the derivative. So second derivative is literally rate of change of rate of change. So, like acceleration, like acceleration. Yes, very good. Very good example. Acceleration is derivative of displacement with respect to time. Okay, because velocity is rate of change. So, rate of change of velocity. So, very good example of this is that velocity is rate of change of displacement, and acceleration is rate of change of velocity. So, acceleration is rate of change of rate of change of displacement. so acceleration is second derivative of displacement with respect to time so this is a physical example how we actually use it in physics that acceleration which is equal to rate of change or what we say in calculus language just a moment so what we say in calculus language that acceleration is derivative of velocity with respect to time or rate of change of v with respect to t so that is equal to second derivative of displacement s with respect to time so that's an example of it so just note down this first then note down or just understand it like so yes so what did you wrote between d square upon or d square y upon dx this square part, that... this is the pronunciation how we pronounce it d2y by dx okay so this is the okay but what it actually means is this it is second derivative of y with respect to x is it d square y or d2y Ah, uh, it's actually d square y. The symbol looks like d square y, but for whatever reason, we read it as d two y by d x square. 
the commonly when we pronounce it, we pronounce it that way. You are correct that it sounds more like this: that d two y by d x square. So it's not this actually; it's this. It's d square y by d x square, but it is pronounced like this. There might be some particular reason for that. I'm not aware. Okay, so let's understand an example. Of differentiation. Sorry, what? come again, beta. Sir, uh, second derivative is the differentiation of differentiation, right? Yes, it is differentiation applied to the derivative, you know, or rate of change of the rate of change. Yeah. So, for example, suppose we have the function, like just now the example we took, x to the power four minus two x squared. Okay, then dy by dx over here. Was four x cube minus four x. Okay, so this is what we call the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, if we differentiate this again, so to find second derivative, what we have to do? We have to differentiate the derivative itself. So we'll substitute this now over here. So we'll substitute the value of the derivative that we got in the first step. So differentiation of what it will become differentiation of four x cube minus four x, which you know is twelve x square minus four. So this is becoming what? This is becoming the second derivative. This is the second derivative of y with respect to x, or what we read as d square y by d x square or d two y by d x square. In this case, when y is this, this is what the second derivative is. Now, very soon we'll understand why it's important to. I mean, what is the application and importance of second derivative? Apart from, of course, this thing that acceleration is second derivative of displacement with respect to time. But here, what we are studying currently is about behavior of functions and application of derivative. Even in that, it's going to give us something useful. So yes. So so we can find the second derivative derivative of any function of y. It has to be some particular function like a linear function or something. No, any function second derivative can be found. But for example, you can tell me yourself what will be the second derivative of a linear function? What is derivative of a linear function? One. It's a constant, right? Yes, sir. If you have a function like y. Equal to m x plus c. The derivative is what m, na? It's constant, correct? Yes. Sir. So second derivative yes, will be how much? It will be zero. Zero. So a linear function has zero second derivative. All other functions have non-zero second derivative. Okay. So for yes, example, sir. a quadratic function, its derivative will be linear. So its second derivative will become a constant. Yes, a cubic function, its derivative will be quadratic. So its second derivative will become yes. linear. Okay, but it's not just about algebraic functions. You can take the example of sine cos also. For example, sine function, its derivative is cos, and its second derivative becomes minus sine. So it's very interesting, right? Just the sine reverses comes back to the original function. Okay. Now, what is the significance of second derivative? It tells us about the rate of change of dy by dx. Okay. So why that rate of change of dy by dx is important? Let's understand that. Okay. So now coming back to, if we have a sort of a general graph of a function to understand intervals and all that. 
so i'm just imagining i have some function whose graph is like this it first increases then decreases and again increases okay so at the point e i'm assuming it reaches a sort of a peak because the function is increasing up to a x equal to in from a to b the function is decreasing and then again after b the function is increasing so what i know so far from the graph what i can analyze is that dy by dx is positive or fx is increasing for x less than e okay then dy by dx is becoming negative or the function fx is decreasing for x between a and b okay and then again dy by dx is positive or the function is increasing for x going greater than b i don't know how far it's going so i'll just leave it at this okay but now if you analyze exactly at the point a what is happening so you realize something very interesting at the point a if you draw the tangent exactly at the point a what should happen it should be a horizontal line okay and similarly at the point b if i draw the tangent it should be horizontal okay so particularly at the point for any point less than a the tangent is positive slope any point after a the tangent is having a negative slope but at a at x equal to a dy by dx is zero or what we can say is that if the function y is equal to fx dy by dx we write in short form as f prime okay so we we'll say that f prime of a is zero now similarly what is happening up to b it is negative and after b is positive so exactly at the point b what is happening the value of dy by dx is again zero okay or f prime of b is zero so that is why these sort of points they are called critical points or turning points x equal to a and x equal to b here are called the turning points okay or sometimes you also call them the critical points for the function fx because what is happening at these points is that the function is turning its behavior from increasing to decreasing at x equal to a and that's why you can see that x equal to a is like a peak point okay and similarly it is changing its behavior from decreasing to increasing at the point x equal to b so that is like a dip point so when we have a peak point it is also called a point of local maxima so we say that fx the function has a local maxima at x equal to a and when it has a dip point like this in the graph we say that the function has a local minimum so i'll explain in a moment why we use the term local over here maximum minima you would have guessed it has to has to do with the fact that it reaches a maximum value or a minimum value but why we use the term local i'll explain with examples okay and it's in analysis of this maximum and minimum or local maxima and local minimum that our second derivative will also come into play okay so first just go down up to this part so this is critical or turning points and the concept of local maxima and minimum
Okay, so this concept of critical points is clear. No? That any point where the derivative of a function becomes zero is a critical point, and it will either be a peak kind of point where we have a local maxima, or it will be a dip kind of point. Okay. So we can summarize this, and we can say that critical points or turning points, they are points at which the derivative of the function is becoming zero or slope of tangent is equal to zero okay. and they will either be a point of local maxima which is basically like a peak point or local minimum which is a dip point so now the question becomes that okay we can analyze from the derivative of the function where all the slope is becoming zero so what are my critical points okay and you can visualize the function can have any number of critical points okay including you no know, for example you can have a function which has no critical points I'll give you an example look at the function y is equal to x cube it does not have any peak or dip points look at the function y is equal to any linear function mx plus c it does not have any critical point okay. so there no critical points okay. whereas on the other hand you look, look at a function like y is equal to sin x or cos x or any of these see that it has infinite number of critical points because it's a infinite shaped wave like this also. So it has infinite critical points. Just now we had seen the graph of that function y is equal to x to the power 4 minus 2x square. Shape of the graph was like this. You see that it has three critical points this one, this one, and this one. This one has three critical points and two of them were local minima and one of them was local maxima. This one was the maxima and these two were. So any such combination is possible and we can always analyze for critical points by just finding the derivative of a function and then putting that derivative equal to zero. Now the question arises is how do we, you know, without drawing the graph and all that, which is like more lengthy. So how do we quickly with a sort of shortcut method, understand that a given critical point is a point of local maxima or a point of local minima. So that is where the second derivative will come into action. Sir, yes, better. Sir, can you explain this once again? Like, there's a problem with my internet connection. Sorry, which one? 
so this critical point right so critical points are points at which the derivative of a function is zero like in this above graph you can see that at the point x equal to a and at the point x equal to b if you draw tangent exactly at those points there will be horizontal lines right yes sir so those points are called critical points so naturally a critical point will be a point either where a graph peaks or where it dips like at the point a you can see it's peaking so that type of a critical point is further called a point of local maxima or a peak point whereas the type of critical point at b the function is having a dip so it's called a point of local minima okay is it clear now okay so sir it should be equal to zero right derivative should be zero yes okay so further that's what we said the slope of tangent or f prime x no the derivative should be zero at a critical point second derivative of a linear function so we could say at that time there would be critical point so a linear function will not have zero derivative at any point na. y equal to mx plus c dy by dx is m na. so m will either be positive or negative the graph that i have drawn m is positive right oh so it does not have any critical points yes so depending on the nature of the function the formula of the function or whatever it, it can have any combination of critical points it can have zero critical points like the linear function it can have infinite number of critical points like the sin x graph or the cos x wave whereas it can have limited number of maxima and minima so limited number of critical points like the third one that we drawn the x to the power 4 one Okay, so now let's understand the difference between the point at which the function has local maxima and the point at which it has minima. Obviously, the slope is zero at both the points. Okay, so let's understand about the second derivative. D two y by d x square. Now, in short form, we also write this as f double prime x. of a function y is equal to fx at critical points that is points which are either peaks or dips so understand about this so it's all through simple logic that we'll understand this next So first, let's concentrate on a peak sort of point. Okay. So at a point like A over here, at A the derivative is zero. F prime of A is zero. Okay. But if I select a point a little bit before A, like A minus delta x. So what about the derivative at such a point? It will be negative. F prime will be negative. And similarly, if I select a point a little bit after this, sorry, it will be positive. Right? Positive. Yeah. Yeah, it's increasing, so it will be positive. And at a point like this over here, if I draw the tangent, it's having a negative slope. At x equal to e plus delta x, if I see. So now, what I can say about f prime x from this? So at a peak point x equal to a, we can see that f prime of a is zero. 
but f prime before it is positive okay and f prime after it is negative so that means if you analyze the behavior of the function f prime now not f but f prime what kind of behavior that function is happening at a point e before it it was positive okay and after it it's becoming negative so it must be doing this it's decreasing okay so f prime x is decreasing at x equal to e was is going from a positive value to a negative value so its derivative should be what it should be negative so in other words the second derivative should be negative at a peak point now likewise now if you do the same analysis to the dip point you will see its reverse of this so we'll do that separately then we'll come back to comparing both of them so the original function y is equal to fx so now if we analyze this function at the point b to draw tangent at this point is having zero slope but draw tangent at a point before this is having a negative slope and draw tangent at a point after this positive slope is having a positive slope so it has the reverse behavior so you can see that at a dip point like x equal to b f prime of b is zero but f prime of b minus delta x was negative and f prime of b plus delta x is positive so that behavior of the derivative function f prime x that is having this behavior that at b it is zero but at b plus delta b uh, or delta x it's having a positive value at b minus delta x it's having a negative value so it's going like this so f prime x is increasing at x equal to b so its derivative should become positive So that means f double prime x is positive at b. Okay. Now, if we put both these informations together, we can see how the two types of critical points are different. Okay. At a, now what we are understanding at x equal to a, where we have a local maxima point. Or peak kind of point. derivative is zero but second derivative is negative yes where is at b what is happening derivative is again zero because it's a critical point but second derivative is positive so at a point of local minima or dip derivative is zero Its sequence is positive. So this becomes the condition for local minima at a point, and this becomes the condition for local maxima.
so this is this becomes yet another application of differentiation or differential calculus that given any function without plotting its graph without you know analyzing the intervals and all that we can just analyze derivative and second derivative and using that by putting the derivative equal to 0 and solving for x we can find all the critical points and then by finding the second derivative's value at given points we can analyze whether the given critical point is a point of peak or a point of dip so just understand and note down the key points over here and then we'll do lot of practice based on this so you'll get used to applying this in solving problems so, sir, so this is one of the important applications of differentiation yes beta so sir we need to uh, consider a point like uh, at a point if it was a peak point or a dip point so we take another yes. point plus delta x and see if it is decreasing or increasing no that is for the explanation but now we can directly use the condition that i have given na? that we need to do two things we need to put derivative equal to zero so we have the critical points and then need, we need to find the second derivative and just see whether it's positive or negative if the second okay. derivative is negative that means this is happening this is what is happening over here that the derivative will be positive before that and negative after that understood na yes sir so we don't need to test the values anymore we just need to apply this simple thing over here this condition this condition is a two step process that if it's a local maxima point then at that point derivative should be zero and second derivative should be negative whereas if at a point derivative is zero but second derivative is positive then is the opposite kind of thing is the local minima point okay so now you can compare the two and see the difference in the condition for maxima and condition for minima 
the fact that derivative is zero is a common condition for both types of points and that is why we call all such points together as critical points but at the peak type of points the second derivative is negative whereas at the dip kind of points the second derivative is positive So done. Done, no? okay. So now see, using this now, we will develop a step-by-step -step method for finding local maxima and local minima of a function. Or the peak points and the dip points in the graph to find it. So stepwise method. For finding the local maximum or minima for a function. Any functions whose graph we are not aware of. Okay. How do we guess at which points there is a local maxima and which points there is a dip point? Local so given the function y is equal to fx for this function, the first step in our method is that we find its derivative and second derivative. So this is a very easy step. We have to just apply differentiation. So dy by dx or f prime x and d2y by dx square that comes by differentiating the derivative. So this is our first step. Okay. Then second step, we find the critical points or the turning points. So what are critical points? They are points at which slope is zero. Points at which slope of tangent is zero. So for this, we solve for f prime x is equal to zero. So solve these for x, and those will be our critical points. And finally, we need to find out critical points has local maxima or which of them has local minimum. Okay, so third step, this is called the second derivative test. Because what we do is we test the value of the second derivative at each of the critical points. So let's say these critical points are A, B, C, etc. Suppose. Then F double prime A. If it is positive, it means that the function has a local minimum at x equal to a. If double prime a is less than zero, it means that the function has local maxima at x equal to a. So like that, we test for each of the points. For each point, we test the value of the second derivative. And if it comes out to be positive, then we know it's a point of local minima. If it comes out to be negative, it's a point of local maximum. So this might seem like a very lengthy process right now, but don't worry about it. Just understand the steps. We will do enough practice that 
you will find it easy enough to apply these in problem solving Yeah. Right. So once we are clear about these steps, we can just look at some pra practice examples. So let's start with something extremely. Yeah. Sure. Answer. Then. Okay, so let's start with something easy. We have a function which is simple quadratic function like this. Now we want to find any local maxima or minimum. So this one I'll just demonstrate to you how to do the steps, okay? So basically the function given to us is 2x minus x square. So step one, you have to find the derivative of the function and the second derivative of the function. Let's do that. So dy by dx or f prime x. Just differentiate this so you can see you'll get 2 minus 2x. Right. And second derivative that is derivative of this. So that's minus 2. Now step 2 we want to find our critical points. So basically we have to solve for derivative being zero. So two minus two X equals to zero. We have X equal to one. So we have only one critical point. So now we have to understand whether that critical point is a local maxima or a local minima. So we do the third step which is the second derivative test. So we understand whether, so at critical point, x equal to one, 
what is the value of the second oh, density? Two. It's minus two because it's actually uniform for all values. Yes, sir. But more importantly, it's a negative value. So second derivative is negative means that x equal to one has a local maximum. Because what was the condition for maxima at this point? F prime of that point should be zero and F double prime should be negative. And it's satisfying that criterion. Okay. So now we can understand that at X equal to one, the value of Y becomes how much? So Y was two X minus X squared. So the value of Y also becomes one. So this is the point of local maxima. And if we just analyze the function a little bit more, you'll understand the reason why this happens. Okay. You can see that we had this function, x tends to minus infinity. What is the value of y? y tends to minus infinity. So this minus x squared term dominates and x tends to infinity. y again tends to minus infinity. So it's that sort of a graph. So understand that We just do a bit of work and you can also see that at x equal to zero, the value of y is zero. Okay. So it's passing through this point, zero comma zero. It's having a local maxima at this point, x equal to one, y equal to one. So let's say that point is here. And then it's starting from minus infinity, reaching the maxima here. So it's having this sort of a graph. So, and if you would do a bit more effort here, you will also realize that this point is two. So you get a very nice way of understanding the graph of this quadratic function, taking help of the calculation of local maxima and minima. Okay, but again, I will remind you that graph plotting is not the main purpose for us over here. For basic calculus, the purpose for us right now is the local maxima and minima. That's all. So. What we'll finally analyze is that this function has no local minima. And one single point of local maximum, which is equal to y equal to one at x equal to one. Okay, so these are all the steps that we would use in any function like this. Okay, this just happens to be this case where it's a quadratic function. So we're getting only one critical point. And in this particular case, that critical point is coming out to be a point of local maximum. So could you just explain this once quadratic again. function with a cubic function or any other polynomial or a trigonometric function or whatever, the same steps we'll be using. Yes. Could you just explain how did you know we have no local minima? Because there is no other critical point, but a key critical point here, we have analyzed by second derivative test that it's a point of local maximum. So we are not left with any other critical point. No? Ah. Okay. You already know that the point one, x equal to one is a point of local maxima. So had there been a minima, then you would have got critical point there also, no? but there's no other okay. critical point. There's only one critical point. Okay, okay.
Okay, so hope this is clear. Let's do another example question now. So exactly the same steps. Okay, only depending on the you know type of function, we might have a different combination of critical points. Okay. So let's observe this next one. So this is a three x square minus x cube. Okay. So again, find local maximas and or just try this out yourself just apply the same three steps okay Just text me the answers as you're getting them. Like you can first send me the critical points itself if you're getting any. Then we'll come to maximum, minima, etc.
Okay, so people, let's analyze this question. Very good. That's correct. Uh, it will have a minima at the point zero, right? And have a maxima at the point two, I think. Yes. Local minima and local maxima, let us. So let's do each of these steps. So first we can see that the derivative of this function, if we differentiate this, So you can even factorize this and write this like this. And second derivative, to differentiate this, so it is six minus six x. So step one is done, okay. Now critical points, so for that we have to solve for points where the derivative is zero. So x is equal to zero. X is equal to two. X is equal to two critical points. Now, typically when we have two critical points, one of them has to be a maximum, one of them has to be a minimum. So the graph of the function has to be either like this or the graph of the function has to be like this, one of these two. So either minima is at the point zero and maxima is at the point two or vice versa, maximize at zero and minimize at two. So which of these two graphs is correct? For that, we have to do the critical, uh, the second derivative test. So at x equal to zero, which is the first critical point, okay, we can see that the value of second derivative is becoming how much? It is becoming six minus six into zero. So it's positive. So that means there is a local Minima. Minima. At, at x equal to zero. And similarly, the second point x equal to two pay at this point. Minus you can eight. see that the value of second derivative will become negative. So it's minus six eight. minus six into two. It's a negative value. So that means there is a local maximum. Local maximum at x equal to two. So we can see that our local minima is at x equal to zero. Y will also be zero when you substitute x in this, okay. Whereas our local maxima is at x equal to two. So y's value will become how much? Y is, Four. yes, three into two square minus two cube. So 12 minus eight. 12 minus eight. eight. Plus two, okay. so it's four. So this is all done. Okay. So we have got the answer to what we are looking for. But if we just analyze one more step ahead, we can also see the behavior of the function. In addition to this, we can also see that for the function y equal to, uh, what was it? 3x squared minus x cube. Okay. Y tends to minus infinity as x tends to infinity. Because this x cube term dominates. Okay. And y tends to infinity as x tends to minus infinity. Okay, so if you analyze on the number line, you can see that zero, two are critical points. So the function will basically be decreasing to a minima here, then increasing to a maxima here, then again decreasing towards minus infinity. So we can now even analyze that the graph of the function will be like, um, like this one. Okay. And in this, Will be point zero comma zero. Okay, then two comma four. So let's say that point is this. Okay. So the graph would be like this. So calculating maximum minima at a more advanced stage of calculus that you do in class 12th match, it will also help you in understanding graph plotting better. 
at our level here for physics it is just enough to be able to do this much that is up to this step that we found out the local maxima and minima okay people so hope these steps are clear yes so we are now done with the applications of differentiation next lecture we'll be ready to start integration but uh, i will also keep some time for discussion of doubts uh, and questions i will be sending a worksheet but also i'll be sending you a list of questions to do from the module exercise so quite a few questions from exercise 1 uh, exercise 2 and also exercise 3 which are differentiation the maximum minima etc and cover those this week and we can discuss from that next week also so that's it for today's session people wish you all the best thanks for attending thank you sir bye thank sir. you so much okay bye people bye thank you so much sir